Right, hey guys. Um, well, let's go ahead and start off how we're supposed to. Nice, nice, nice. Yes, yes, yes. Enjoy the view. All right. Um, so real quick, I have sent out the FRQ question number one, and then I sent out the response as well. Okay. Um, you guys should not bullet point your responses, but I did just to kind of give you a, a quick rundown, um, and we can. Um, I'll send out an email here shortly, but we can meet tomorrow, Zoom live if you want and kind of go over that one. And I'll be sending out a second FRQ as well. Uh, but if if you guys are busy preparing, I guess, for maybe other AP exams, then we don't have to. So I'll send an email out and you guys just let me know what you're thinking. Um, so yeah, the FRQ practice one had the concepts question, and then it had the FRQ question. Um, then I'll send another pair out here this week as well. Um, we only have two videos remaining, so this is one of the two. Uh, this is on personality, personality theories, personality traits. Um, kind of a lot to know here. Okay, so I'll, I'll get booking, but this one might be closer to 20 than it is 10. Uh, probably the best way to study personalities is going to be through a case study. Uh, so something like Phineas Gage, right, and uh, how his personality changed after his injury. So most case studies are, are you know, going to give you the most, or case studies are going to give you the most amount of detail, right? Uh, now, it's just unique to that person. Uh, so most case studies would be used maybe after injuries, after some kind of illness or something like that. Um, surveys, you also see. That is, I mean, there's all kinds of, uh, of problems with surveys. I mean, they're easy, they're convenient. You can ask a lot of questions and you can gather a lot of information, but the people taking them, um, you're just kind of, I mean, you, you might not ever, you know, have any kind of follow-up whatsoever. So you're hoping they were honest in their responses. You were hoping they weren't biased. Uh, you were hoping they weren't just trying to make themselves look good or look bad or just messing around. Um, but the information you do get, even though you get a lot of information, it's going to be shallow, right? So surveys, you know, there's not a lot of detailed responses you're going to get. Uh, like I said, there's not a lot of follow-up. Um, now, a couple things to note. <clears throat> personality inventories okay uh they are they're surveys that are longer and more specialized you would use these specifically for personalities right uh this enables longevity and continuity uh getting more detail getting a little bit more in depth um an example of this is the multi, the minnesota uh multi-phasic personality inventory probably the most commonly used um of the personality inventories designed to identify traits that might correspond with disorders. Okay, so there's a lot of personality disorders out there. Um, and you know, the the MMPI, the Minnesota Multiphasic um, Personality Inventory, it is going to um, basically kind of give you almost like a Venn diagram of responses, right? Where here's the, the traits that you have, here's disorders that kind of match up with those traits, right? And that helps psychologists uh, and or psychiatrists um, work with them on personality disorders. That's going to use factor analysis. If you remember this from earlier videos, that's the method for identifying variables, right? So again, uh, you know, this trait corresponds with this, this disorder, right? Uh, they are objective, uh, meaning they can, be cons they can be scored consistently, you know, time and time and time again. It is not subject from one person to the other or one psychologist to the other. Um, it, it's almost like a scan trying to, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's objective, right? Uh, it will be scored. It'll be interpreted. There is no, inter it'll be without bias. Um, okay. Projective tests. I mean, a quick example of that would be like the, the Rorschach um, ink blot test, but uh, a person is shown an ambiguous, uh, ambiguous, uh, almost like meaningless uh, picture um, or stimuli and a trained professional is going to interpret their response uh, or their interpretation of the picture, right? Uh, so this helps, more than this, this helps explore the unconscious mind, um, maybe issues uh, or conflict that is going on, uh, the, you know, trauma that is going on in the unconscious mind. Uh, so this will eliminate the Hawthorne effect, right? Trying to give the psychologist what they want to hear, right? What you think the psychologist wants or what you think you should be doing, right? Uh, so this kind of eliminates that. Okay, uh, two examples, thematic, um, a perception test. So the patient is provided a picture basically of, you know, uh, some kind of scene, right? Um, and again, it's gonna be kind of ambiguous. It's gonna be kind of meaningless, right? And the person has shown this picture 
and they are tasked, the patient basically, they are tasked with creating a caption for it. And the psychologist is trained in interpreting that patient's response, right? And that allows them to, to dig into their unconscious. Uh, the other one is the famous one, that's the Rorschach um, ink block, where again, it is shown as not just one picture, but it's shown a series of, of these ink blots, right? That um, allegedly have no meaning whatsoever. It's just a block, block, uh, uh, block of ink. And the patient is supposed to basically say what they see in that ink, right? Uh, a bat, right? Uh, a bolt of lightning, um, two heads, whatever it might be, right? And then the psychiatrist is going to interpret their response. And uh, the idea here is that uh, you can recognize patterns and that allows you to, to see something in their unconscious or to notice something, right? And so as you are showing them all these ink blots and you know, uh, let's just say there's 50 and um, 28 out of the 50 come back to, um, let's just say uh, some kind of some kind of uh, monster or scary animal or something like that, then, you know, there might be something in the unconscious, a traumatic experience they had back in the day with, I don't know, a, a pit bull. Okay. Um, okay. Real quick, reliability and validity, reliability, are the results stable? Are they constant? over numerous attempts, uh, over numerous studies, over numerous questions, right? Uh, it becomes reliable. Validity, um, the, these responses, the, this data, right? Are they accurate? Um, are they measuring what they are supposed to measure, right? So are, if they're, they're valid, if, they are, if they're measuring what they're supposed to measure. Uh, okay, Freud claimed that conflict makes or creates personality, right? So childhood conflict can be long lasting, but for Freud, conflict, uh, makes it, it, it creates it, it, it significantly impacts what your personality will be. Real quick, the id infancy uh, that is the pleasure principle. If you remember the pleasure principle, uh, your your behavior, your actions um, are going to reflect a desire for immediate gratification. Right? You will you will do whatever behavior you will. Your personality will reflect whatever gives you instant gratification. Ego that's kind of toddler and early childhood. Um, that's going to be more the reality principle, right? Um, so as, as your ego is developing, you are able to realize that your your uh, pleasure, your gratification, isn't always the most appropriate thing at the time, right? So can you can can you balance reality and what you want, right? So um, you know, sitting quietly, right, or uh, finishing your your plate, right, uh, to get a reward, to get a snack, right? Super ego. Uh, that's your conscience. Uh, that's knowing right from wrong. Uh, that is a blend of of maybe science, uh, of religion, of of your environment, and how your parents brought you up, right? So kind of knowing right from wrong. Um, Neo Freudians, right? So basically, Fre Sigmund Freud's more or less his students, but some of his um, uh, right hand men, so to speak. Uh, so they are going to argue that the unconscious is, uh, unconscious is, is going to make your personality, going to create your personality. So a lot of the trauma you have experienced, uh, the conflict that is going on in the unconscious, that is actually making your personality the way it is. Okay, so two you need to know. First one is Alfred Adler. He developed the in inferiority um, complex, and a lot of you guys probably heard of this before, but uh, basically it's this. A lot of your behavior and your personality is driven by the unconscious, uh, unconscious um, trying to prove that you are superior to other people, right? So uh, those people who might be tough to get along with, uh, those people who might be bossy or whatever it might be, uh, they they might um, have an inferiority complex. I mean, they they feel bad about themselves, and so they are trying. The unconscious is trying to show that they are in fact superior. Uh, Carl Jung spelled. Jung, J-U-N-G, he has the collective unconscious. Basically what this is saying is we all kind of share the same unconscious, right? Uh, and that's why so many of us might have the same bad dream, right? Or that's why so many of us might might have um, nightmares that are kind of similar with each other. Or that's why so many of us might have, you know, really short tempers. Uh, people share common unconscious, similar urges, dreams, desires. And that's why there's a lot of people with similar personalities, okay? All right, getting close here. Um, see here. Okay, humanistic psychology. Uh, remember that that's going to reject anything saying that the unconscious develops our personality. It's going to reject anything that that says the environment decides who we are. Uh, because for uh, the humanistics, 
led by Maslow, they're going to argue that uh, we are all motivated to be the best version of ourselves, right? And uh, because of that, uh, you know, more or less self-actualization is going to drive our personality, right? Uh, and the higher the drive, uh, the higher the self-esteem, you know, the better that personality is reflected. Um, so we are motivated to grow and develop and seek self, self-actualization. Carl Rogers he has a term incongruence, okay? That's basically the difference that exists between who we see ourselves as and who the world sees ourselves as, right? So uh, how you see yourself versus how the world sees you, right? Or your teachers see you. Um, the ideal self, that's the person you want to be. That's the person you wish to be. Uh, that's the person that, you know, uh, you have a bucket list and you have goals and, and you have dreams uh, of marry, family, career, whatever it might be. And that is your ideal self, right? Everybody has it. Everybody knows what they want to be, right? Uh, perceived self, that's how a person sees themselves, right? So that is your self-image. That is how you view yourself. Uh, physically, it, it could be one way, right? You know, you look in the mirror and you see maybe nothing but blemishes, right? Um you look in the mirror and you think, oh yeah, good looking. Uh, it, it's all it's all perceived self, right? Now, that can obviously differ um, from how the world sees yourself, but that, that goes back to incongruence. Okay, unconditional positive regard, you might remember this from class, that is support and positivity, even through tough times, difficulty. Um, Carl Rogers argued that, you know, when you're a psychologist, you should always operate with unconditional positive regard, meaning no matter what your patient tells you, uh, you should be very positive. You should be very supportive, right? Uh, you kind of see this play out with alcoholics um, and Alcoholic Anonymous that the more you judge them or the less you make them feel comfortable or the less you make them feel like they can recover, uh, the less likely they are. So if you treat somebody positively, you know, they might be able to, to make it to that level. Um, all right, last thing here is the five-factor personality uh, model. So these are five traits, right? And that's not to say there's only five traits, but the big model, the five-factor uh, model is, is widely re regarded and is seen throughout psychology. Um, you know, a little mnemonic device here, acronym, OCEAN, O-C-E-A-N. Okay, so to remember these five, OCEAN. Um, first one is openness. Okay, so your personality, if, if, if you are openness, your personality, if you have high, and I'm only gonna give you the, the end of the spectrum, the high end of the spectrum, right? So if you have high openness, uh, you have a great imagination, you have insight, you are very curious, you are eager to learn, you like to learn, you like to try new things, um, and you like to create new experiences. Now, when, you're, when you have an openness personality, you're probably pretty creative. You know, you'd probably be good at the arts and crafts and, and music and stuff like that, uh, and you can do a good job thinking abstractly. Uh, number two is conscientiousness. So you are thoughtful, you have good impulse control, you know when is a good time to speak, and you know when is a good time to, to not speak. Uh, when is a good time for this behavior or that behavior. Um, you are goal-oriented, right? You can make lists, you can follow through. Uh, you are organized, you see the detail, see the need for details, and you iron out those details. Uh, you plan ahead. You are aware of your impact on others, right? Uh, and I, I think awareness is, is a big word there that goes with conscientiousness. Um, extraversion. You are excitable, you are sociable, uh, you are assertive, you like to put yourself into situations, you like to put yourself, um, you, you like to plug yourself into as many avenues as you can. Uh, you have a high level of emotional expression, uh, people know when you are happy, right? Uh, you are outgoing, you are energetic, you are the life of the party, you prefer uh, to be around other people, you are at your best when you are in social settings, right? Uh, See here, number four, agreeableness, uh, trusting, kind and effective, highly cooperative. You are very, um, you are very likely to assist other people. You enjoy helping others. People might think of you as a yes man. Um, you know, friends probably and, and teachers they probably come to you when they need your when they need help. Period. Um, you will act out of concern for others. So even if it's not necessarily something you want to do, you will volunteer um, or you will accept. You know, someone's request for a favor, um, and, and you all, all often defer to other people, right? Uh, you know, what movie you want to see, uh, where do you want to go, uh, where do you want to hang out with, blah, blah, blah. You will often defer to other people. And the last one is neuroticism. 
Uh, you guys have all probably heard the term, you know, neurotic or someone is neurotic. Um, a lot of times that is kind of synonymous with crazy or psycho. You'll see here. Uh, so neuroticism. Uh, emotional instability is going to be kind of the first trait there. High stress, you know, rapid or violent mood swings, um, high, I, high anxiety. Uh, you are constantly in a state of worry or a state of irritation. Uh, when things go wrong, you do not cope well. Um, you know, it, so when you have conflict or failure, uh, you're not going to handle it very well at all um, and easily irritated. All right, so that's the end there. Uh, make sure you, you get your notes down on that. Make sure you are watching all the videos. You know, what's the, the, let me check the date, sorry. Today is, today's the 11th as I'm, so you have eight days until the AP exam. And remember what Ebbinghaus and the spacing effect tells us, don't wait for the last minute. So hopefully you're watching these videos. Ho hopefully you're in crunch time and you're really taking this seriously. Um, do that FRQ practice. Again, I'm gonna send another one out really soon and check those responses, check your email, because hopefully we're gonna get a live Zoom session in today or uh, this week, but I know you guys have other exams as well. So I'll send an email out and see if we can't find a day or a time that works well. All right, see you guys.